So for this catch and cook, we planned to catch a few monkey face eels in order for us to make some tacos. Uh, we were kind of hoping to take home some uni to share with our friends and family. And also, we wanted to try to make a Filipino ceviche, which is called kilawin, using limpets, which is a type of mollusk sea snail. And as you can see here, there was plenty of sea urchins in these tide pools for us to harvest. We were able to bring home a lot and actually share it at Jay's surprise birthday party later on in the night. And no matter how many times I visit these tide pools, I'm always amazed at the wide range of sea life that's available here. So we're out here, two hours north of San Francisco, on the coast, out here trying to get some uni some monkey face eels and some limpets so we're gonna try and cook a really nice meal later tonight so right now it's about 235 or no 135 sorry 135 it's still not peak low tide so plenty of opportunities for uni and for eels make their caves more available to us. And then limpets are easily attainable off of rocks. And oh look, there's a bed of mussels right there. If you notice these seashells on these rocks, these are actually limpets. They can sense your vibrations from your steps and it makes them suck down which is why you hear that sound. But I hear they're highly delicious. A lot of times you might see it in rice porridge, sell it in Asian stores. So the key to harvesting limpets is to make sure that you don't cause too much commotion when you're trying to forage for them, because if they get disturbed, they will clamp down onto the rock even harder. And so you just want to calmly walk over and then use a rock to sort of tap them off of the rocks and you'll be able to take them off very easily. So I'm currently baiting up on some squid using a size one hook attached to a coat hanger and a gardening stick that I got from Daiso or gardening pole, excuse me. It's kind of tricky because this is very buoyant and so having a tough time keeping it in one place. Bait presentation is very important when you poke pole. You kind of want your bait to float in the water as opposed to jamming it in front of the monkey face eel, which is why you want to have a long enough coat hanger to reach back into the cave. But you also want a short enough leader that the bait is able to float. So the trick to poke pulling is you want to try and find some spaces between rocks that make little caves or little crevices where monkey face eels can hide. 
You want to present your bait. You want it to float there. Oh, I think I have one. But sometimes it might also be a rock crab picking at your squid. Uh, so initially I had the, um, the hook fall under this rock right here. And then I saw that that had a, a crevice under it. So then I was like uncomfortable with the way I was sitting. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna like chill and like put it on my lap and uh, have to, like go in that crevice. And like just a couple minutes later, um, I started feeling like movement and I let it just chill for a second because I want to make sure like the hook gets in and then um, pulled it out and it was such an uh, exhilarating experience. I haven't caught a fish in a long, long, long while and this is the first time I've ever caught a fish before. So like, plus I love eating my fish too. They are delicious. You don't got an eel! Oh, 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 that's one way to do it. <laughs> stomp on it. <laughs> Curb stomp. Monkey face. Curb stomp. Cement. American uh, History X. If you're not doing anything, uh, wait, I, would Jay, go I would love some help doing this. <laughs> okay, go behind the dumpster, man, so they don't see you. It's a little brutal here, folks. This is the thought provoker provoking some thought. It's terrible. Right? Oh, oh my god. A third hell of blood on your shirt. There's hella blood on Where? It's all over. There's, look y'all, there's blood. <laughs> How'd you get blood on your back? Holy moly, you got blood on your Well, that's a wrap for this sweater. <laughs>
delicious crispy smell after the race. It's not your tailpipe. It's a little bit of shake and then break. Shake and break. Yeah, that's ready. Mm. How is it? Nice. I'm not gonna bite to it. Yeah. And this journey started at 10.45 in the morning. <laughs> 2.30 for me. Another one of these limpets. Happy birthday, dude. I know. Best birthday gift ever. Fresh from the sea. Print monkey face prickle back. It's too delicious. Go ahead. No, you. It's your birthday, dude. Yeah. Oh, Start. Know. For this, let's take a look. Oh, wait, wait, I'm just getting all up in the shadow. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god, that seasoning. That looks good, right? That mm. chipotle crema, man. It's so fresh. You got the pico de gallo to go with it. Mm. It's the one. Mm. Oh, man, I'm ready for him too. <laughs> Imagine if we were at a house. <laughs> uh, uh, we use all of the fish. And if I had time, I'd use the head for soup. Just go, Joe's! <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. We're, we're good. good. We're, we're good. good. We're, we're good. good. So we got the bones in there. Still with some meat that we didn't get from. We use all the meat. Go ahead, Mark. 